Are you wasting protein by having too much all at once? What do I mean? It suggests that there's a limit to the amount of protein that can be used for building muscle per meal, with any extra protein being oxidized. On top of this, it's thought you have to wait some hours before consuming protein again to be able to re-trigger the muscle building process. If true, this suggests to maximize muscle hypertrophy. It's best to divide your daily protein intake across a few meals separated by a few hours. But what, if it actually exists, is the limit to the protein amount you can use per meal? In this video, we're going to dissect the most up-to-date scientific literature behind just this, so that by the end, you'll have a clearer picture of how you may distribute your protein for muscle hypertrophy. Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Turning back the clock to 2013, one of the most influential papers on protein distribution was published. Let's see what it was about. 24 trained men trained the leg extension, and then in the following 12 hours, they consumed 80 grams of whey protein. One group did this by consuming 10 grams 8 times every 1.5 hours, a second by consuming 20 grams 4 times every 3 hours, and a third by consuming 40 grams twice separated by 6 hours. The result? Muscle protein synthesis, which is essentially the process by which your body builds the proteins that can result in a larger muscle, was best when consuming 20 grams 4 times every 3 hours. Some other papers also find 20 grams maximizes the protein synthesis response, such as this one that had trained subjects train their lower body. Muscle protein synthesis was more or less optimized after consuming 20 grams of whey protein, with 40 grams providing very little extra benefit. So is that the end? 20 grams of protein is all you should have in one go, any more and that extra amount is quote unquote wasted. The answer is no. There are considerations, multiple of them in fact. One of them is that they just involve training with one or two exercises for a muscle group, but most people's training sessions tend to involve training much more exercises and targeting multiple muscle groups. This could change things. Indeed, this 2016 paper had subjects train their full body with this session, and this time around, Consuming 40 grams of whey protein successfully increased muscle protein synthesis more than 20 grams. Another consideration is in the first study we mentioned. Remember subjects just consumed 80 grams of whey protein over 12 hours. As alluded to in our last video on how much protein you might want to consume in a day, most people are going to consume more than 80 grams. Furthermore, with the other studies we mentioned, they just measured muscle protein synthesis up to 5 hours after exercise. But what about beyond this? This is where an excellent recent study comes into play, and it's ignited quite the buzz online. This new study was seriously comprehensive, but I'll relay the most crucial details for our purposes. Active men trained their full body with this session, and thereafter consumed either 0, 25 grams, or 100 grams of milk protein. Muscle protein synthesis was greater and longer lasting after the 100 grams of protein. Relative oxidation rates were also pretty small, which goes against the notion that any protein in excess of 20 to 25 grams is entirely just oxidized. However, one consideration is milk protein was used. Around 20% of this is whey protein, which is fast digesting, while around 80% is casein protein, which digests slower. You might suggest these results would be quite different if a proportionally faster digesting protein was served, yet the authors provide some reasons as to why they think the responses in this study may not just be exclusive to predominantly slower digesting proteins. Anyhow, what does all this mean? Well, protein distribution may not be as important as once thought. Since a single 100 gram serving of protein was capable of producing larger and longer lasting growth signaling, it's likely fewer larger meals can still lead to great muscle growth. Additionally, it demonstrates something that is also quite clear from other areas of the research. How much protein you consume in the whole day is by far the most important thing about protein with other factors being far less important. Having said this, 
it is worthwhile stepping back and realizing although this is a fantastic paper, we are still just talking about muscle protein synthesis. We know muscle protein synthesis is essentially the process by which your body builds the proteins that can result in a larger muscle. However, as perfectly described in this review, there are established cases where muscle protein synthesis data fails to correlate with actual muscle hypertrophy. The paper does a great job at outlining when and why this is. Also, remember all the muscle protein synthesis data largely looked at the responses in the hours after training. But people of course can consume protein in the hours before training. Everyone eats protein on the days they don't train and people tend to also consume their protein sources with other foods. Thus, it is ideal to look at studies that have compared different protein distributions in the context of an overall diet for actual muscle growth over many weeks of training. Let's do just that. In 2020, this research paper was published. Untrained individuals trained three times per week for 12 weeks. One group fundamentally had close to even distribution of protein across three meals, while the second group had a distribution that meant only two of the meals could be considered as sufficient protein servings. So in essence, the study compared three to two sufficient protein servings a day. The result? Strength and total lean soft tissue increases were better for the three protein servings, but the differences were certainly far from large. As a result, this study suggests three servings of protein a day may be a little better than two. This study isn't flawless. Both groups consumed around 1.3 to 1.45 grams per kilogram of total body weight a day, which as seen in our last video, is definitely not terrible. But you could suggest that if protein intake was higher, the results would be different. Anyhow, what about data on more than three protein servings? This paper published a year later recruited male rowers who were training and bulking for eight weeks. Consuming three to six protein servings a day was compared, with total protein intake and calories equated. The result? All measurements, including gains in fat-free mass, were comparable between both. Thus, this study suggests although it's not detrimental, consuming more than three protein servings a day fails to provide an advantage. This data does come from merely 10 rowers, but another paper on 24 elite rugby players supports this notion. Subjects continued to train for six weeks and had to consume three protein shakes each day. One condition consumed the shakes with every meal, which resulted in four sufficiently sized protein servings a day while the other condition involved consuming the shakes between meals, which resulted in six sufficiently sized protein servings a day. Gains in lean mass were similar between both conditions. So in total, the current evidence suggests three protein servings may be a little better than two, with no further benefits of more than three servings. Bear in mind this isn't plentiful or super strong data, so it's possible future research could improve our insight. If this happens, will of course provide an update at the House of Hypertrophy. If for whatever reason you cannot or do not want to consume three protein servings, don't stress about it too much. Once again, the acute paper on 100 grams of protein may ease your mind. And remember the bigger picture, daily protein intake is far more important, and even more important than daily protein intake, as depicted in our last video, is training. You just can't eat yourself to a great physique, well-constructed and executed training provides the key foundational stimulus for growth. Speaking about well-designed training, amidst all the noise online, it can definitely be frustrating and time-consuming to craft an effective program that gets you closer to your desired physique. But our high-quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, which is fundamentally your personal muscle-building assistant in the palm of your hand, can help you. Other apps truly craft garbage programs, but this app intelligently formulates a program effective for complete muscular development, with the training variables fine-tuned and inspired by the scientific literature. Best of all, it is 100% tailored to what you want. Let it know the equipment you have, how much you can train, and if you want to preferentially target or neglect certain muscles, this can all take you less than a minute. During workouts, the app's algorithm carefully suggests how you may progress to push you to the next level. 
aesthetic graphs automatically display your long-term progress. And there is a huge exercise database of some of the best muscle building exercises with simple video and text instructions behind each. Try out every single one of the premium features to your heart's desire during a free two-week trial through the link in the comments and description. If you like it and choose to go beyond, the link cuts the price of a subscription by 20%. I truly believe the app is exceptional, with a thousand of reviews speaking to this. In the quest to maximize muscle hypertrophy, it has been thought how you distribute your protein intake across the day could modify the gains you see. There have been papers suggesting 20 grams of protein in one go maximizes the muscle building signal, with no benefit to consuming more. But there are multiple limitations and considerations to this data. Indeed, in a well-designed study that overcame some of the limitations, consuming 100 grams of protein successfully increased the muscle protein synthesis more than 25 grams of protein. In my eyes, this demonstrates how protein distribution is likely not as big of a factor as once thought, and you most likely can see great gains with fewer larger meals. Yet, this data still is just measuring muscle protein synthesis in the hours after one training session. Ideally, we want to look at research that has measured muscle growth in some way after weeks of training. When we do this, we see that there is evidence that three protein servings a day is a little better than two. But there's no extra benefit, nor a downside either, to consuming more than this. Finally, don't forget that well-constructed and executed training provides the key foundational stimulus for growth. Thank you for watching. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or our recent deep dive into building the lats.